Welcome in to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. Today on our show, we're gonna talk about emotions and how investing in emotions can actually be costly. As we all know, there's a cost to everything that we do. Sometimes it's a dollar amount, and sometimes it's like an opportunity cost of something we gave up to do the said decision that we chose. We're gonna talk about that today as it relates to your investments and what you should be looking at regardless. But before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. Benjamin Graham, the father of economics and the father of investing for many, uh, he wrote a great book. Many of, I've talked about it often, but his quote has always stuck with me and has a lot to do with today's show that the investor, you and I, our chief problem and even our worst enemy is likely to be himself. Friends, when times are tough, we wanna to do what? We wanna limit our losses, right? And we talked about that recently on our show when it comes to there's always a reason to sell stocks. You can take a look at that episode. But when things are going well, on the other hand, we wish what? We wish we had invested more. We always have that Monday morning quarterback, that hindsight's 2020. We have that FOMO, as the young kids say nowadays, that fear of missing out. But when you're investing in general, giving in to fear, is often a losing strategy. And more often than not, as I've seen investors with this mindset, tend to do the exact opposite of what they should be doing. They tend to buy high and sell low as they invest more in like a rising market and pull money out in a lowering market. Now, interestingly enough, what I noticed here was a graph that came across my desk from the same BlackRock Investment Institute and studies I've been showing recently on the shows. And it actually was a perfect depiction, something that I've actually drawn before uh, in, in client meetings of the emotions and really the riding the ups and the downs of the market. So I wanna share this with you. I'm gonna put it up here for a second. And let's start out here in the lower left corner, right? We're starting our investment game. We, we found our job maybe, maybe we got an inheritance or something and we wanna get into the investment world. So we start out what? We start out encouraging. Right? We, we then go into confidence. We start feeling confident. And, and as maybe the investments are rising a little bit, then we're getting excited. Right Now we're thrilled Right when we get to this peak area of euphoria. And they put a number here of euphoric. And I love that, Right, a, a word there. Now, as you can see there, the marker, and this is what I was getting uh, at, and I've seen this play out in experience of two decades as an advisor, is that investors in general will tend to buy high. Things are going really well, right? Your friends are around you are making money and all of a sudden they're like, hey, I've been, I've, been avoid, you're, I've, I've been avoiding this and now I wanna get in. And they get in when things are good. Now, as we, you know, if that were the case, and maybe I'm speaking to somebody uh, who's gone through this life cycle, if you will, they get, at the, they get in at the top here and all of a sudden they're getting a little surprised. It's not doing as well as they thought. It's kind of going down. Then they start to get nervous. Then it's like, okay, well, is this thing really rebounding? It's not doing exactly what it was supposed to do. And then all of a sudden, nervousness turns into worry. Now, this is the point where, as I spoke about recently on a show, where there's always going to be a reason to sell stocks. I mean, anxiety and fear is a big deal here. I'm not, you know, by any means unaware of this or naive to this. And again, Benjamin Graham's quote, like the father of economics, mind you, right, of the investor, you and I, our chief problem and our worst enemy is likely to be ourself. This is where we start to get panic stricken. This is friends where we start to, and I think we start seeing people selling at lows. And as we all know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist in this world of investing to understand one simple concept that we've all learned early on, whether you're listening here and watching here uh, for the first time or you're a first time investor, right? You like to know, hey, I wanna buy something for let's say $10 hypothetically and sell it for 12. I wanna buy low, sell high. Well, that's the idea of investing. We're not really looking to buy something in that hypothetical example for $10 and selling it at $8. That's a loss. Now, emotions, what I wanna bring here, has a lot to do with everything we do in life and particularly with our money. And for some reason, I think we tend to not talk about our emotions when it comes to our money. I'm not sure why, which is why for years on our show, here over the past couple of years, I really wanna talk heavily about it because investors who have followed their emotions, and maybe this is you, I'm not sure, but I wanna bring this up. Investors who have followed their emotions in joining the crowd, this herd mentality of other emotional investors have historically regretted it. And periods that followed investors cashing out of markets, for example, have provided, if you look at history, above average returns, while periods that followed investors adding to the market have provided below average returns. Think herd mentality. And I'm gonna show another graph here with that in mind, that was the same article from BlackRock that the average investor gets their timing wrong. I wanna share something here because I think there's a key word in that that I wanna focus on, and that's time. You've heard me say this before if you follow or listen to our channel, that it's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. 
Now on this graph that they're showing here, this research, they did a three year returns, you know, based on direction of quarterly stock flows, like the ins and outs. And they did this since 1923, all the way up to the end of 2022. And you'll notice there at the, at the dotted line across the line there, or across the graph, there's a 9.6, that's our marker, right? 9.6 average annual return of the S&P 500 in this time period. So that's the marker. Again, just the market. Now, those that were following the herd on the left bar there, basically the return if buying when others are buying. And I want to speak to this openly because I really feel in this world that is so expensive, the one place that we can all stay friends for free is our lane. I'm aware that we are influenced by other people in our community and our friends and people we respect. I'm totally aware of that. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but make sure you're doing it for you and your goals and your objectives, okay? Because you can see here, the average investor gets the timing wrong because they're doing it when other people are doing it, but they're not realizing that they don't really have a strategy or they're doing it because others seem to be making money and they want to do it too. And you can see their average rate of return over that time period is about five and a half percent. Now, those that were going against the herd or as Warren Buffett always said a great quote, right? You want to get greedy when people are fearful and fearful when people are greedy. To be fair, never really love the term greedy, but the idea is, right, that you want to invest maybe when things are looking down, make sure to do it right with the right person, find the right advisor, and you want to find the right stocks and sectors and all that stuff. But it's important to look at it here, and you can see against the herd, it's at 13.9. They actually beat the market. If you look at that from that perspective, because the return they were receiving are when they were buying when others were selling. Again, back to Warren Buffett's, you know, best saying, one of the best investors, right? He was getting greedy, if you will, or he wanted to buy when people we're selling. So I think it's a really important concept today on our show that I want to bring up that investing with emotions can actually be costly. So make sure you're doing it with logic and rationale and strategy and making sure that your emotions aren't winning the war, if you will, against your logic or your rational nature within your mind and within your overall emotions. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that today. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember to make your money matter.